We're here at the 100th Farm Show, and I'm here with Secretary Redding, and um, we're here to celebrate this wonderful event. And I know I've been looking forward to it, even though I don't like getting older. I love yeah. the fact that I'm finally here at the 100th Farm Show. So I know you know a lot of the history, which I was kind of surprised that well, this building wasn't here initially. And they had the farm show a lot of different buildings throughout Harrisburg. So tell me about the history of this farm show. You know, it's interesting. Everybody uh, thinks that um, this was the original sort of complex. This is a Depression era building. So that's a 1930, uh, early 30s when this complex was built initially. Before that, I mean, you went uh, downtown Harrisburg. You took the train into Harrisburg, you drove in. And then you got a map, and you went to 10 different buildings, I mean, over the course of the early years to find the exhibits, the family living, and it didn't add any livestock for about 10 years in the first, uh, the first 10 years, but everything else was found in different buildings, so it's a great piece. And of course, over time, we've grown this complex to 23 acres, all under roof, um, used 250 different shows throughout the year, so it's farm show as our biggest show that starts the year. But just think about the significance of this complex uh, here in the Harrisburg region, capital region. I know you use it for other events too. I mean, yeah. I think I've heard that people actually get married upstairs in the banquet hall. We've had weddings so. here. We've had, uh, you know, uh, graduation parties. Um, you name it. Everything. Uh, everything. Yeah. What I like about this farm show is educational. I mean, yeah. I've always been interested in agriculture and being on a farm, but. To come here and just every time I come here, I pick up something. Mm -hmm. And we were just at an event that talked about PA preferred and uh, homegrown by heroes, which in, we're talking about veterans. Yep. Tell me about that, like the PA preferred first, and then how do we come up with that homegrown by heroes? Yeah, so the Pennsylvania preferred is is our registered trademark for Pennsylvania product in Pennsylvania. So it's the keystone, and it has that sort of check mark uh, that, that consumers look for. That, that tells you that it's Pennsylvania produced or processed here in the state, so it's important so consumers know what am I buying, am I buying and supporting Pennsylvania uh, farms and Pennsylvania agribusinesses. Uh, it's also important for the farmer and the agribusiness to know uh, in the marketplace, very confusing marketplace, you know, we shop, we see things all the time, and what is actually produced in Pennsylvania. So the assurance you have with any product with that on, it's Pennsylvania. So we began to think about, um, uh, in a completely different context, the workforce that we were looking uh, for agriculture. One of those areas, uh, having come out of Delaware Valley University, was the veterans program. And how many veterans returning to higher education to get some type of certificate or degree were interested in agriculture. Uh, and we put those things together at the university. When I came here, uh, we looked at it and said, you know, we really ought to have a way to recognize those veterans in the marketplace, and then we identify that there's a national program called Homegrown by Heroes. So we put them together. When you look at our label, it's Pennsylvania Preferred, so it's Pennsylvania, and the Homegrown by Heroes is a veteran. So you put those together for Pennsylvania. It's a great, great addition for the market. I, I was so impressed because yeah. veterans are so important to us. And you know, you said when you came here, like you were the Secretary of Ag under Governor Rendell. Yes. And of course, administrations changed, yeah. but then you came back. Right. And I know just when everybody heard you were coming back, everybody was so happy because you do such a good job. Thank but you. tell me what you did in those four years of interim time. Yeah, so I, I was with the department, uh, you know, uh, through Tom Ridge and, and uh, uh, Rendell years, and, and really, you know, after 16 years and two of those as uh, secretary, uh, administration changed, and, and you know, we, we've all been through that. And, and I had a wonderful experience, great experience with governors and secretaries. So I went to uh, Delaware Valley University, uh, which is down in Doylestown. I was the Dean of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences there. And over that time, got a chance, of course, to work with students, uh, but also an adult population. And a lot of those folks uh, were veterans coming back into uh, higher education. And that's where I really was introduced to this issue of careers and, and workforce development and the veteran uh, special needs of our veterans. And how are we teaching our young people about agriculture and farms, like to convince them to get into farming? So we, uh, we were fortunate in Pennsylvania to have 151 ag science programs in Pennsylvania. Um, but we, we know we've got 501 school districts, so there's a lot of students who never get exposed to food and agriculture. So we've taken on a task in the department of really looking at um, you know, how do you engage sort of middle school, high school year uh, students in a career in agriculture. 
if they're not exposed to it, how do they know about it, exactly. right? And that's part of our challenge, and, and there's not a simple answer to that, but we're working with the Department of Education. We're looking at the educational standards for agriculture. Uh, there's a really uh, a couple of nice uh, pilot programs around the state that have worked well. One of those is IU 13, which is a Lebanon Lancaster area, and they use agriculture to teach science. So every student, things like that, we think we can, we can harness for the benefit of talking about agriculture and maybe spark some interest. Maybe the farm show sparks interest, right? That's what I'm we sure to it say. does. I'm yeah. sure it does. And I'm glad you said Lebanon because in the redistrict I picked up a little bit of Lebanon County. Yeah. So that's always interesting. But I also, there's so many of these um, restaurants, farm to table. How do you think that, you know, they're becoming everywhere now and people, I love to go to them. Like, how do you think that started to happen? I, I think it is one of the great developments of our time. I mean, that there's rediscovery of agriculture not just in terms of its economic benefit and jobs, but being able to know who is actually feeding you, right? Go meet the person, who's the neighbor, who's feeding them? And that whole farm to table concept, this is a farm to shelf exhibit at Farm Show that's sort of on a different scale, but same idea, moving from uh, food production through a process to, to the shelf. The farm to table has been a great development. You see them, it's part agritainment, it's part uh, tourism, it's all good food. So I, I hope that continues. We want to be, uh, as a department, very, very supportive of that. I hope it does too, because I love to go to those restaurants. Yeah. But tell me, you must have a favorite farm show story. So what is it? Well, I'll tell you, the, uh, over time, the one thing that I've come to appreciate is, I, I was a, an exhibitor here at the farm show back in my uh, teen, uh, teen years. But the one thing that really brought it home for me was my, when my kids were exhibitors within the a family living area, right? So they made some uh, uh, crafts and uh, woodworking projects as 4-H members and rocketry and baked goods. Uh, and, and my wife and I have talked about this, how proud we were. Uh, we were both sort of in the farm show, but when your, your kids do it and, and see them get excited, it sort of makes that point about the investment that we've made both as parents, but also as a commonwealth in the farm show. It's a great so everyone moment. should bring their kids, even though sometimes there's lines here, it's, it's yeah. totally worthwhile to come here and stand through those lines because other than the food court, I don't think there's a lot of lines, but talk about the food court. I know this year we have a new milkshake. We have a new milkshake. So the Dairyman Association, uh, when they were thinking about the 2016 farm show and something new, uh, it's important to put this in context. The Dairyman Association haven't added a, a new milkshake in 60 years. So, big deal, right? They began to think about, well, how do we sort of commemorate the 100th anniversary of the farm show and tossed around some ideas. And out of that, of course, they had a contest to, to choose the uh, shake. Ended up with a strawberry cream, which is all that, it, uh, all that it was meant to be, right? It's a beautiful addition to the chocolate vanilla. I've heard a lot about it. So far, I've just done my chocolate vanilla because that's my favorite. Before I leave today, though, I'm going to go get my strawberries and cream. Yeah, give it a try. It's actually very good. Well, yeah. I had a wonderful week here, and I just appreciate everything you're doing for us and keep up the good work, and um, yeah. we'll be back next year. Look forward to it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <laughs> appreciate it.